All right. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to uh, the Community College Info Session for Berkeley Engineering, specific for engineering science. Uh, my name is Scott Mora. I am uh, an associate professor in civil environmental engineering and also chair of the engineering science program. And you'll hear a lot more from me and I'll tell you about the program and uh, we'll, uh, super keen to hear your questions. But before we go further, uh, let me turn the mic over and introduce Tiffany Reardon. Tiffany, could you introduce yourself? Hi, it's great to be here today. Um, I My name is Tiffany Reardon and I work in uh, engineering student services. And so if you decide to come to UC Berkeley, which we hope you do, uh, we do have a program specifically for transfer students and it's called T-Prep. And it is a summer program that you can do free of charge. Um, aside from T-Prep, we also have uh, a course called Transfer Link, which is a course for students that are first semester transfer students. And my colleague, Nicole McIntyre, um, her whole job is to uh, work with transfer students. So if you decide to come to Cal, um, we have a transfer center, we have a lot of support for you. And so we do hope that uh, you consider applying. And if you're admitted, uh, that you come to Berkeley because we love transfer students. Awesome. Uh, great. So, you know, before we get into the formal program, I want to turn the mic over to you. The most important thing you should know before we even get into the formal program is you know, what's important about Berkeley engineering, the transfer student population and engineering sciences building community. So in that spirit, it'd be great to have you introduce yourself. Uh, if you don't mind, when I call on you, could you share your name? Uh, perhaps what uh, CC you're you're attending, or maybe you've recently attend attended, and then it'd be interesting to know where in the world are you sitting right now. So those three questions: name, CC, location. Uh, I'll call you out one at a time just to be organized. Um, yeah, let's go like this. How about Trevor? Hello, I am Trevor Shapiro, currently attending Monterey Peninsula College in. Monterey, California, and I'm currently in Monterey, California. Nice. Great. And if you're comfortable and willing, guys, you know, turn your cameras on so we can relate to each other as human beings and not just black boxes, because um, that's who we are. That would be great if you're willing um, and comfortable. Uh, yeah, so let's jump to... Uh, Cynthia. Um, electrical engineering. I'm oh, sorry. I'm working and I'm attending this meeting right now. Um, um, my major is electrical engineering. I live in Norwalk and I'm from Cerritos College. Awesome. Thanks. Anna. Hi. Um, my name is Anna. I'm attending Irvine Valley College in Irvine, California, and currently I'm sitting in Irvine. Um, did you ask for anything else? I'm sorry, I forgot. Nope, you hit them all. Okay, cool. 100%. Juliana. Uh, hello, I'm Juliana. I'm currently attending Pasadena City College, and I'm on campus right now in Pasadena. Nice. I originally grew up in the Pasadena area, so that's my home, CC. Oh, nice. All right, Chi. Oh, hello, um, I'm attending Pasadena City College, and uh, 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 I'm currently in Portland, attending a fabrics convention. <laughs> wow. Cool. Carl. Uh, hi, my name is Carl Gomez. I am in the Peralta Community College District or system, whatever, and I'm at BCC, and I'm currently in Oakland, California. Nice. Um, Adonai. Hi, I'm, uh, can you hear me? Exactly. Yes. Okay. 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 Yeah, my name is Adonai, and I am at Cal State University, Sacramento, studying computer science at the moment. Nice. Letty. Uh, 
Uh, Sorry. Here we go. Hi. Um, so I'm actually not a student, but I am the University Transfer Center Counselor Coordinator at Oxnard College. Oh, great. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Uh, Jim. Hi, I'm Jim. Uh, I attend Hartnell College in Salinas, California, and I'm currently in Salinas, California. <laughs> Great. Darren. Hi, I'm currently attending Foothill College, and I'm based in Fremont. Excellent. Yasmin. Yeah, if you if you were speaking, Yasmin, we weren't able to hear. Jose, why don't we go to you and then Yasmin, uh, feel welcome to introduce yourself in the chat. Jose. All right, Jose, if you can hear us, feel welcome to introduce yourself in the chat as well. Um, you know, if you're having AV issues. All righty, so let's do this. Let me share my screen. All right, let me get this all set up. Ah, Jose, can you hear us? Oh, okay. Yeah. Hello, my name is Jose Vega. I'm one of the uh, general counselors here at Oxnard College. Happy to oh. be here. Awesome. Okay. And so you're a colleague of Leti? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Thanks. Thanks for coming, guys. Yeah, no, you're welcome. Thanks for having us. All right. Uh, can you see slides? Yeah. Awesome. Welcome to UC Berkeley virtually. Uh, you're virtually on our campus right now, um, spending time with each other, with Tiffany and myself. And uh, I actually wanna tell you what the outline for today is. is. So let's see, it's 2.18. Um, I'll give a quick introduction to Berkeley, to UC Berkeley and Berkeley Engineering. Then we'll talk about the engineering science program and specifically the various majors and as part of that, you know, I'll introduce our four majors. Each of you is likely interested in one or maybe a few of these. Then we'll talk about the key student group that uh, really co-organizes the whole program with us. And then I'll give you examples of alumni who have been very successful from our program. And then uh, Tiffany and I uh, will answer questions. So as questions come up though, don't hesitate to wait until here. In fact, um, I absolutely hate it when it's just only me talking. Interrupt, raise your hand, and I'll try to pause in moments to get you guys to ask questions that you're concerned about. And maybe we'll just kind of integrate this uh, throughout the whole agenda. Does that sound good, guys? Sounds good. Sure. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So introduction to UC Berkeley and Berkeley Engineering. Let me give you just a bit of a timeline to, so we can appreciate the history. So the university was founded in 1868. Uh, in fact, let's see. We celebrated, um, you know, a few years back, 150 years of uh, UC Berkeley. And at the time, you know, it was these, it was just called the University of California, period, right? Just happened to be in the city of Berkeley. Then they got ambitious and decided, uh, okay, let's sort of extend our um, reach down to Southern California. There's a growing population there and create U University of California South or University of California, Los Angeles, right? And, uh, and thus UCLA was born. Uh, in 1919 as the second campus of the UC system. Now, of course, today we have 10 campuses. The most recent campus to open was uh, UC Merced, 
One of the campuses also includes UC San Francisco, which is essentially strictly a medical school and um, hospital system. Um, but but it, you'll often hear UC Berkeley referred to as sometimes just California, which is really a reference to its history as the original um, UC campus. Um, how many of you are international students? Any inter international students here? No? Okay. Um, okay, maybe I'll still mention anyways, because I think it's an important uh, dimension to our diversity, of which there's many dimensions, is uh, so in 1930, just as one other historical landmark is the International House Open, um, which is a location that is a dorm of types uh, for international students, along with the facility to host events. Um, but what I think is super interesting is, you know, international students are a huge part of the UC Berkeley population and generally just the University of California system population. This stat really, really surprised me. It turns out that the entire UC system hosts 10% of international students across the entire freaking country, right? Is that a modern statistic or like when it opened? Oh, no, no, it's a modern statistic oh. today, today, right? So when we say um, the University of California, you know, we serve our communities, we serve our state, we serve the nation, and we serve the world. Um, that's because we are people from our state. We are people from the U.S. We are people from all across the world. So um, um, sometimes I say UC Berkeley is the center of the universe, and I don't mean that in a braggy way, like, like, you know, all the intention is on us, but more like it's just such a crossroads where so many people from across the world come through, right, to be able to meet and interact. Um, another really interesting data point is uh, 1943, the Manhattan Project. Anyone know about this, the Manhattan Project? Yeah, what can you tell us, Adonai? Um, well, it was the development of uh, nuclear technology and research towards the atomic bomb. Yeah, exactly. And who you see, so, you know, the, you know, between the two world wars uh, and as World War II was approaching, you had all these scientists from Europe who came to US um, and they really started to develop nuclear energy as a generation technology, right? And then, um, Eventually, a lot of these scientists, including Robert J. Oppenheimer, who is a physics professor, like literally right over his building is right next to me over here, um, you know, became lead of this Manhattan Project. And it's a very mixed story, quite honestly, because of the tremendous guilt he felt for the lost lives because of this. But, you know, that started with physicists here at UC Berkeley. Actually, uh, do some of you know the movie director Christopher Nolan? Anyone know any Christopher Nolan films? Maybe you can speak up. No? The uh, Batman, Dark Knight. He also did um, Inception. Uh, what else? Anyways, top, top notch filmmaker. He He's a... They're actually creating a new film called Oppenheimer, and they've been filming on campus here. Uh, so Christopher Nolan and a super A-list set of uh, cast. Go to IMDb, search Oppenheimer, look at the cast, and you know some of those people have been spending time on campus filming. Whoa! Who do you see, Anna? Um, Emily Blunt, Florence Pugh, Robert Downey Jr., Cillian Murphy, Matt Damon. Yeah, Cillian Murphy plays Oppenheimer, and uh, yeah. Oh, I can see that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Another big part is the free speech movement. So this is a huge part of the fabric of the culture of UC Berkeley. Oh, I haven't been watching chat. Some of you have been responding there. Um, uh, so the free speech movement, you know, really happened during the Vietnam War. And it might be hard really to imagine this point in time, but there was a point in time where, you know, when students would protest against 
being drafted and sending young people into Vietnam, a war that we couldn't win, uh, you know, the police would crack down on this and spray them down with fire hoses. And, you know, th this was not an accepted thing to be able to speak your mind uh, all across the country. Uh, but a movement to speak freely, you know, uh, about political things, about justice all around the world, social justice, economic justice, environmental justice, labor justice, really began at UC Berkeley, right? Particularly with Cesar Chavez, uh, who was an important leader during this time. And there's a lot of history on campus and that permeates our entire university. You know, in Berkeley Engineering, we're training you to be technical. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because I think we train a certain brand of engineer, right? Not just one that makes a startup company and it gets bought out and they make a bunch of money. If you want to do that, go to a school across the bay. But rather, you know, a graduate who understands societal needs, who really is trying to make impact in communities, um, particularly when they're disadvantaged. Um, uh, so that I think really permeates from this history uh, into engineering. Okay, and then uh, last one. Sorry, I'm waxing a little poetic about this. Anyone know who this uh, woman is? You should, because she's possibly one of the most important scientists today. Uh, this is Jennifer Doudna, who a few years back won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for CRISPR. Um, maybe you've heard of CRISPR. This is the special gene editing technology. Like literally you can program genes like computer code to eliminate things like um, um, sickle cell anemia, literally saving lives by editing biology as if it's code, right? Um, this could be the future, right? Or maybe is the present. Um, and actually related to that, she has a very interesting biography um, written by, um, I don't know, I'm forgetting his name, very famous bi bi biographer who's done people like uh, Benjamin Franklin and Elon Musk, et cetera. But, it, you know, she's had to deal with a lot of the ethical implications of this. And it's very, very um, interesting to hear about. Anyways, uh, you'll see her walking around campus. You can stop her and say, what's up, Jennifer? Um, she, she loves soccer. She's a, a center back from her young days. So you can ask her about that. Okay. Um, all right. Now UC Berkeley traditions. I feel strongly about this because I was in the Cal marching band. Um, you can see all these band members. I was there who maybe I'm back here or something. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about this, about our different traditions. Uh, our largest and most iconic building is this large clock tower called the Campanile, um, you know, modeled after, uh, you know, architecture in, in, in Italy. And the most important thing you should know about this Campanile, our clock tower, is that it's bigger than Stanford's. <laughs> okay, I'm teasing, I'm teasing, ha, ha. Um, but it is. So, okay, as if that's important. Stanford's supposed to rhyme with T-U-R-D? St no, it's spelled correctly. So I don't know why they call it a junior university. Leland Stanford Junior. I don't know why they insist on being a junior university, but I don't know. I, I didn't name the university. They did. Um, okay, maybe there's typos in here. Excuse me. Uh, so anyways, we have a friendly rivalry. I emphasize this because I was in the Cal band. Um, what here's did you our, play? Sorry, what did you play? Tenor band? sax. Tenor sax, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yes, so if you want to know the fight songs, I have them all memorized. Um, and we have a lot of them, actually, so uh, let me know. Uh, here's our mascot, Oski, and it's a golden bear. Look how tough and vicious he is with his cute little gold cardigan. Very cute very vicious. Um, and if you go to the football games, one of our cool traditions is these card stunts where the student section, you know, does these like animated graphics um, during halftime. It's it's pretty fun. Oh, I forgot the 4.0 ball. So 
you know, if and when you come to campus, uh, it is a tradition that you rub this ball um, so that you can get a 4.0 GPA. Um, I have no data on if it works, but why not? Why not try it? All right. So let's go to some stats. So um, engineering science, let me point it out amongst all the majors is you might be thinking, is this some like, uh, sorry, I'm trying to find my pen. Is this some small bespoke major? And it's, it's not, it's actually, when you look at the undergraduate enrollment, the biggest departments are perhaps not surprisingly electrical engineering, computer science, the mechanical engineering, bioengineering, civil environmental engineering, but then comes engineering science. It's, uh, it's not non-trivial and it's bigger than industrial engineering and operations research. It's bigger than material science engineering, bigger than nuclear engineering, bigger than aerospace. By the way, all these other places have in some cases their own buildings or floors. Um, you know, um, so engineering science is, uh, you know, in the middle when it comes to uh, size of, of departments. And although people might consider Berkeley as a larger institution, our undergraduate student population is not that big, 4,000 roughly, right? That's not that big when you compare to other, um, you know, large public universities. So it, it's it's not you know you're you're not just uh, just the number amongst many. Um, also, I'm going to give you this data. This usually gives a big reaction. Here's the straight up admissions numbers. Okay, this is where people take screenshots and get obsessed with it. But you know, I'll I'll, I'll tell you what the numbers is. There's nothing to hide here. This is um, the number of students who applied to these different majors, the number of students who were admitted. And then the number of students who registered, SIR stands for a, a statement of intent to register. See, did I get that right? Is that the right acronym? Maybe Jose knows, Tiffany knows. Yeah, they'll usually say SIR for short. Yeah, so um, you can get a sense for the size. Environmental engineering, for reasons that might not be so surprising has become very popular in past years. Um, um, these other two majors, engineering math and stat and engineering physics have always been popular for quite a long time. Energy engineering um, is our youngest major. And uh, actually a few years ago, it was the most popular major. I think maybe there's some shifting happening here, but anyways, those, those are the numbers. And you can see in total 78 enrolled this this fall. Um, some other facts and figures about the demographics of our student body. Uh, you can see that the total student headcount is generally been increasing. Importantly, though, we're also working hard to increase our gender diversity. So it has been going up, but it's still not anywhere close to where it needs to be. Actually, in engineering science, our gender diversity is higher than um, what's reported here at the college level. Um, we're we're higher than than thirty percent, um, you know. But this uh, still needs to improve. Um, okay, I won't emphasize too much on this. Our faculty, yes, they're great. They're famous. They get awards. Blah blah blah. Um, you can read about those things like National Academy of Engineering, distinguished teaching. Um, they've got some special endowed chairs and whatnot. Um, you're, of course, learning from leaders. Uh, and that's all well and good. Let me tell you some other specific things that impact the student experience. Uh, so let's see. This group, if you enroll in fall 23, then you may be still enrolled in early 2025, right? Yes, and um, not only that, if you're a transfer student, oftentimes you, the reason why we're saying 2025 is because oftentimes students might opt for an extra semester. So if you do that, and we also accept our own students for grad school. 
So it's very yeah. well possible that you could be coming uh, and being a part of, of a you know, graduate program. We have many students that are uh, transfer students that stay on for grad school. So that is something to, to consider. Yeah. So yeah, if you do four semesters, you're graduating spring 25. So you'll get to experience this new building, which is what I'm um, trying to point out in this slide. But also, as Tiffany says, it's pretty common to spend a fifth semester where you would graduate fall 2025 and then beyond, uh, depending on what you might do. So actually, I think you are the first group that I've shown this picture to where I can say you can occupy this new student center. And actually, just yesterday, I was securing space. So right here where I'm circling, this is going to be your space in the new building, engineering, science um, uh, uh, room, where you'll have study space. You can meet as teams for group projects. Um, you can hold events, et cetera, et cetera. It, you're getting a space in this new building if you if you come. And at that time, you're going to be like close to graduating. So you'll probably be leaders of our group, you know, guiding the newer students. So um, super exciting. You're, yeah, I think the first group that uh, I've, um, that I think will benefit from this. Okay. Um, also, if you're into entrepreneurship, I want to emphasize that Berkeley actually is very, very successful in this area. So besides some university across the Bay, uh, which perhaps has a longer history, the reality is that being in Silicon Valley and being a university that is way bigger than Stanford, you know, once Berkeley's entrepreneurship programs got up and running, it's sort of like the beast has awoken. And it's amazing the amount of opportunities there are to do entrepreneurial activities, um, you know, taking what you're learning in the classroom or maybe with research in a lab and then spinning it out as a company to take it to that next level for having a societal impact. And we have a very rich ecosystem of this at Berkeley. Um, there's accelerators, there's startups like the Citrus Foundry, um, Skydeck. Actually, in the city of Berkeley, the tallest building is right outside the BART station. And the penthouse level, it says Skydeck up there. So here's, here's the move is, you know, you come to Berkeley, you graduate, maybe you'll get involved in some research or some idea, you spin it out, and then you literally sit on top of Berkeley. Literally is where your office is, highest point in the city, in this incubator, um, where you get, you know, some money to, to continue your idea um, and take it to the next level. So there's a lot of these opportunities which I think is um, very, very exciting. Uh, and then finally, you know, you're all, I think all of you are sitting in California right now. And, you know, being in the Bay Area, you have access to the city, um, the mountains, you know, wine country, uh, and really, really a, a, a privilege to be able to take advantage of the state. So let me pause there for questions uh, before we jump into the majors themselves. Um, when you said there's an engine, wait, is it okay if I just yeah. jump? Okay, cool. When jump you in. said there's like an engineering culture, um, do you mean, is this during school or do a lot of the people who do this do it after school? Like, is there a network that you would say an explicit network to tap into or any programs like that? So are you speaking specifically about the entrepreneurship activities or just generally the community and building uh, culture? Yeah, like a culture of entrepreneurship. Is there anything like a specific entrepreneurship network that you've seen being built or just like it's just something that happens? Because you uh, mentioned entrepreneurship. Yeah. Um, you said like the beast awoke when Berkeley started its entrepreneurship. Right. So I would describe it as a network of networks. So each one of these logos represents a network itself, right? And you can participate in in uh, multiple. So for example, Cyclotron Road, just for example, is, is an incubator for clean energy technologies based at Lawrence Berkeley Lab. So if you're part of that program, um, then you're going to be interacting with scientists at Lawrence Berkeley Lab. You're going to be interacting with people in the Department of Energy. 
uh, and then they're all connected to their network. And then, you know, meanwhile, you could be taking classes in the Sutarja Dai Center for Entrepreneurship and Technology. Many of those actually occur in the in the stadium, actually. And so there you're connected, you know, on campus. You got students who are taking who are in that class with you. Some of them might be business students or law students or public policy students or economic students, you know, and so you're meeting them. You wouldn't otherwise meet in engineering classes um, and taking things that are quite different yet complementary to your to your training. So that's while you're here, but also when you graduate, you know, maybe you go to Cyclotron Road, maybe while you're a student, you're taking classes in Sudarja Dai Center, maybe when you're an alum, um, you're participating in some of these programs. So, you know, lifelong set of networks, and there's a system of networks here. And so when the beast awoke, it kind of created all these networks, not just one. Okay, cool. Thank you. Adonai. So my question was, I've heard from several different people um, that at the UCs, it's very hard to get office hours with your professors. And it's because there are such huge classes and it's one professor for too many students. And a lot of them don't really make themselves available through office hours. Uh, what would you say your experiences with uh, Berkeley? in that respect. All right, here's my calendar. Okay, it's obviously very busy. Here's actually what I want to point out. Um, my office hours were 8.30 to 10. Three people signed up, and then there was an hour and a half where I was sitting here twiddling my thumbs waiting for students to show up. So what you described is at least not my experience. Um, okay, if I had an assignment due this Friday, it would probably be crowded because <laughs> that's how students are, right? They, they really want attention when the assignment is just due. Uh, so no, faculty are generally, you know, overwhelmingly accessible, right? Um, actually, I think post-COVID, honestly, or whatever stage of COVID we're in, students, it's, it's a they're more hesitant to come visit with their faculty. So it's a two-sided thing. It, it's a two-sided thing. Um, yes, there are large classes. Uh, and in some classes, it makes more sense. It could make more sense to talk to a teaching assistant, right? If you want like very specific advice on some problem in a problem set, they might understand the issues you're going through better than the professor themselves who's lecturing on whatever. Um, you know, but generally speaking, uh, faculty are accessible when students seek them out. There could be some, you know, poor actors out there, but they're minor. Okay, I'm a faculty member, so you're probably getting a spun response. Tiffany, from your side, um, what do you think the reality is from which you see or hear from students? I think that, um, a lot of students, as uh, Professor Moore said, I think a lot of students don't go to office hours because they think the only reason why you would go to office hours is if you're struggling. And I always tell our uh, prep and T prep students, no, 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 like that's not the only reason why you would go to office hours. You want to go to office hours for a variety of reasons, one of which, you know, to kind of get to know your professors and, and you know, kind of you know, network with them and talk to them and, and, you know, understand, you know, the things that you can do in your major. Now, certainly in some of the classes, uh, the lower division classes, yes, the math, the chemistry, you know, it is harder, but guess what? You all have taken those classes. You've taken all those classes. So the classes that you'll be taking um, with maybe one or two exceptions uh, will be relatively smaller. Great. Um, looking at time here, let me speed through introducing the majors. Basically, what I'm going to tell you is all on the websites. Um, so I'll go quickly, and then we'll share these slides afterwards. Uh, but I think it's going to be more useful for all of us if we do Q&A. Uh, so 
what is engineering science? Is it A, an interdisciplinary and multi-departmental program? Or is it B, an incubator for new engineering majors that don't exist yet, but should exist in the future? C, um, it's an opportunity for Berkeley faculty and students to create curriculum that's curated to meet tomorrow's, not yesterday's needs? Or D, is it really focused on preparation for graduate studies? In the chat, tell me what you think, A, B, C, or D? We got one A, two A's, oh, some all the aboves. <laughs> nice. So I think the majority of you got it. It's all the above. <laughs> the answer to A, B, C, D is yes. All the above. Um, in many ways, it, it, it hits all these dimensions. So however you want to see it in whatever way is meaningful to you, you can see engineering science that way. Um, let me go to engineering physics. Anyone interested in engineering physics? Yeah, we got two of you at least. Okay, so engineering physics at some other universities, they might call this applied physics. And it really interweaves with classical and modern physics, um, chemistry, mathematics, um, optics, uh, uh, materials. And the upper division coursework really combines math with um, more advanced physics classes and engineering classes. So uh, this is actually one of our oldest majors. Uh, in fact, yesterday I was talking to our Dean of Engineering because the Dean of Engineering at Princeton uh, is an engineering physics graduate, um, but, and she's visiting uh, next week. But anyways, uh, our engineering physics graduates might go to national laboratories, high tech industries like, you know, Intel or AMD or NVIDIA or um, so forth. Uh, many of them go to academia like the Dean of Princeton. Um, okay, and these are lists of classes that essentially you can find on um, the, the website. Here are our advisors. We've got Professor Conte in Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, and also Professor Wu, who is in Material Science and Engineering. So it kind of has that mix of physics, EE, material science, kind of overlapping in that way. Engineering math and stat. So, you know, now you look across the country and there's a lot of data science majors. I like to call, well, is anyone interested in engineering, mathematics, and statistics? Yes. Anna, Chi, awesome. Okay, I tell people this is the OG of data science. Before there was ever data science majors and people talked about this, this is like a recent fad, honestly. Um, we've had engineering mathematics and statistics. And I find that it's, you know, I ask students, why would you pick this instead of data science? And they often say something like, uh, you know, I actually want to dig deeper into the math and like really be a master of it, not just a user. Um, which I think is really powerful and, you know, always, I know, have, have mad respect for students who uh, think that way. So anyways, um, obviously it has a lot to do with pure and applied mathematics and statistics, but combined with engineering, um, there's classes in mathematics, of course, industrial engineering and operations research, some more mathematical classes in EE or ME, courses in math and stat. Our graduates may go in business financial engineering or consulting. My personal training is in control systems, so I have an affinity towards these students. Um, maybe you do graduate study in more mathematical fields, um, either in math, engineering, or economics. Um, and the advisors are uh, Professor Babak and Professor Alan Adler. He goes by Professor Babak, so that's why I'm um, saying it that way. Uh, so this, you know, you can see it has a mix that overlaps with, uh, you know, obviously mathematics, but, you know, some in industrial engineering operations re research with pro Professor Adler and, and also um, electrical engineering. All right. Anyone interested in energy engineering? Yes. Okay. Trevor. Trevor, you're with me because uh, this is, oh, Jim too. Perfect. Uh, you guys are with me. This is the major that I advise for because um, my research is very much around energy. And, you know, energy is basically the biggest industry in the world. So why not have a major for it? 
And uh, you, we really study energy fundamentals, things from thermal fluids, materials, electric power, nuclear, um, you know, data analytics, uh, distribution systems, behavior. Um, you know, now there's a lot of stuff in electrochemistry um, having to do with uh, 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 carbon capture technologies. Um, you know, sustainable fuels for aviation or industrial applications, et cetera. Um, you know, renewables is something everyone ob obviously is super excited about. And so the coursework includes specializ specializations in data analytics, distribution, so more on the distribution of our electric power and consumption, the generation of energy. Um, so talking like nuclear, renewables, and material science to convert and store energy. So employment is often in clean tech industry. You know, a lot of our graduates actually end up working in national, state, or city governments, guiding policy and investment. Um, you know, a lot go to graduate school, of course, and some are founders of startups. Okay, so a lot of this training really overlaps with civil, mechanical, electrical, nuclear, uh, you, you, you really are a hybrid of all these, but keenly focused on energy. All right, and these are the faculty advisors, Professor Adias in electrical engineering, Professor Fratoni, who's in nuclear engineering, myself primarily appointed in civil engineering, and then Professor Zodi in mechanical. So you get that balance of exposure. Anyone interested in environmental science engineering? Yes, okay, I see Trevor, awesome. Um, so, you know, this is really about climate tech, somewhat overlapped with energy engineering, um, specifically focused on, you know, air, water, soil. Uh, so, you know, environmental chemistry, thermofluids, hydrology, water and air quality and its societal impacts. And the way that this major is structured is you can, focus in um, clusters. You can set up your coursework in clusters that uh, these clusters are named air pollution and climate change. Uh, biotechnology is a second. A third is ecosystems, ecological engineering. We have environmental fluid mechanics, geoengineering, and water quality. So employment and climate tech, governments, uh, many go to grad school. I'd say generally our engineering science programs do have a bend towards graduate school. In fact, uh, some of our faculty honestly think of engineering science as sort of like an honors major in the sense that it's a little bit more kind of science, a little bit more rigorous, a little bit more um, opportunities for research and preparing you for grad school. That doesn't have to be you, but it can be. Fun fact, I had a student yesterday that came on campus. He was a transfer student um, and he came on campus to recruit for the company that he works for. And he did this major, the environmental engineering science major at Cal as a transfer. And then he stayed on and got a master's in civil. So that, that's a path that you might uh, consider as well. And he was really eager to um, recruit other students, transfer students in particular. Uh, so it's, it was, you know, kind of nice to see that path and it is a great major. Awesome. Yeah, and the faculty who advise for this are actually in environmental engineering in the civil environmental engineering department. So that, that path is natural also with the faculty that are advising them. Um, also mention our engineering student services advisors. So. Olivia Chan is the person, uh, at least currently assigned to advise students whose majors are in energy engineering, engineering math and statistics, and environmental engineering science. Um, Kendra von Nyhaus advises those who are in engineering physics. And so there, these are the, the key people that you'll talk to to sort out your schedule, understand degree requirements, give you advice on like what is the right path to take, et cetera. Um, let me just quickly mention that we have a student group called the Society of Engineering Science, which is a professional and social club to really build a network. And the group holds a lot of events. Uh, you'll find that the older students are advising the younger students on taking um, classes. Um, also, they put together what's called this unofficial guide to engineering science. This thing is like 
you have to read it because it gives you all the things that aren't on the websites, you know, which is the good professor, which is the bad professor, what are the traps in terms of this class actually has this prereq and you have to make sure to take it. Um, all sorts of advice on like optimizing your time at Berkeley, uh, getting all the information that is sometimes hard to get on, on websites. Um, okay, two more things I wanna emphasize. Also, you know, the, the student group is critical for advising me as chair and the faculty because let's say, you know, you're an environmental engineering science major and there's a certain set of course uh, degree requirements and you decide, like Trevor, you were raising your hand. Tre Trevor, you decide, you know what? I think this needs to be updated. There are all these classes that shouldn't be there. There are all these classes that should be there. I wanna propose a new curriculum. That actually happened with energy engineering. And essentially the students put together the new degree requirements and curriculum. And then there was a couple like iterations with the faculty here and there, and we literally implemented it. So unlike other majors, you have tremendous agency and power in influencing um, what the major is and what courses it should include and so forth. And Society of Engineering Science is instrumental to this. Okay, now the next thing I wanna get across is super specific to you as potential transfer students. Um, I did my undergraduate at, uh, in Berkeley engineering. I was actually in mechanical engineering. And uh, so I, I came in as a freshman, so I was a four-year student. But what I wanna tell you is that the transfer students are so crucial to the fabric of our university and of Berkeley engineering. I say this personally because when I came in as a freshman, there were transfer students that came in like, like you all. And you know those students took me under their wing. And transfer students are different than freshmen. You're not here as long. You often have more life experiences. So when you come, you're more purposeful. You're more focused. You, you, you know what you want to get out of this. You're, you, uh, so that level of like focus and maturity and ambition, you know, I really kind of tried to go under the wing of the transfer students and listen to whatever they have to say and what advice they have, because you know you guys know you're you're here for a shorter period of time. You're trying to take advantage of it. Um, you can connect it with life experiences. It's not just continuing school arbitrarily without a direction to go. And uh, so, so I just want to say, like, you guys are so so freaking important. And as many high quality transfer students as we can get, we we need you. We we really need you because. You're not just amazing individually and you're going to do well after you graduate, but like what you do to shape our culture and our university is crucial. You know, it's not a tack on, it's like a total key feature. So, um, okay. I feel passionate about that because it made a difference to me. Um, yeah. Okay. Then we have some alumni success stories. I'll just leave this up and let you ask a question or two or three. Um, since you talk to a lot of transfer students, did you ever get any like um, impressions from them or just a general sense of how they dealt with if they felt the course rigor like from their community college to Berkeley, um, like the difference in that, how they managed it, was it actually harder, et cetera? Uh, Tiffany, would you mind uh, taking a shot at this one? Sure. So a lot of the um, a lot of the transfer students, um, I think the sometimes the struggle um, comes with just the pace. It's not that students obviously can't do the the work. It's just the pace, like how quickly um, things are are kind of given. And I always say I am so glad that we are not on a um, quarter system. That would be crazy, right? Um, so it's just the time management. I think the time management is probably the biggest thing that I hear students. But in terms of uh, the rigor of the courses, I will say uh, the community colleges do an amazing job with um, with preparing students. And because um, I, I don't know if you went to the admissions talk, but um, we are very, very um, careful in terms of you know, how we admit students, right? That's why it's really important that you take all of the lower division 
courses that are required for your major because we want to make sure that students have the foundation. But, um, you know, all of our transfer students, I think, you know, for the most part, I mean, they, they do very, very well. It's just the pace, right? And that's just time management and just kind of readjusting things. Um, and it's also really important that, you know, if you decide to come to Berkeley, or I would say any school that you uh, decide to transfer to, that you have a strong support network of other transfer students, right? So you want to do study groups. Let's be honest, how many of you maybe don't love studying with other people, right? Maybe maybe you're like, eh, I, I don't really love studying with other people. Um, a lot of our, our uh, classes, you have to study with, with other people. So that's kind of by design because you're all engineers, right? And we wanna make sure that you know how to work with other, other people. But most of our transfer students do, do very well. Um, it's just that, you know, that first semester and the grading, um, that might be something that, that you, Scott, um, explain like the grading philosophies are a little bit different um, versus like, you know, maybe you get a, I don't know, 50%, right? And it's actually not a bad grade, right? So that that does take, take some uh, difference in terms of getting used to it. Yeah, different classes have different grade distributions. Um, you know, I'll, I'll just add and say that there's no question Berkeley engineering is a level up from wherever you're coming from. I mean, this is a serious degree program, famously so around the entire world for its rigor. Uh, you will be challenged. Expect that and, you know, be excited to see if you can level up. But all that said, I think in many ways also transfer students have an advantage. Uh, when I come, when I see them compared to freshmen, Freshmen, you know, a lot of them haven't lived on their own before, you know, some, so they don't know how to manage time or like multiple responsibilities. We have transfer students who have families, you know, they know how to balance their time. Maybe they're taking care of loved ones um, that is taking time so they know how to be efficient with it. Uh, some have been in the military. Uh, so, you know, in some, you will have to level up, but in some other ways, I think you have some advantages. Um, a lot because of having more life experiences. So um, I think that's also a big reason why our transfer students generally are very successful. Thank you so much. Uh, hello, um, I have a question about uh, the students. So what characteristics or qualities do you guys look for in a transfer student body? Thank you. Yeah, let's see. I'm speaking from the experience of participating in transfer student applications. I'd say um, you know, obviously having a record of success from where you're coming from and trying to max out your opportunities where you are. But I think something really important is um it's very powerful when we can see that there's growth, right? Is that transfer students in the record are presented with some challenges and it's fine, it's you know normal to not do well initially, but then eventually, you know, start to find ways to become successful. So so a sense of growth, because you know what really matters for our students is not the quality at which they enter, but the quality at which they exit. And so we need students who can learn the fastest, right? And can grow the fastest. So um, I know we talk about that a lot in transfer applications. Um, I don't know, Tiffany, something else critical to add? I would say passion for the major is very, very important. Um, you know, why you're choosing the major. Probably the most important question you can answer um, on the personal insight questions is how have you prepared for upper division coursework? And one of the ways obviously is, are, are your classes, but in addition, um, things that you've done uh, outside of that, right? Maybe you're involved in a club, maybe you're involved in an independent project. Uh, maybe you are, you know, juggling work, 
and you know maybe you go in two to three community colleges right that tells me that you have really good time management skills if you do that and i've seen i i had a student one time she went to six community colleges just to kind of get all the classes that she needed right so that illustrates uh that you know that you that you have those those skills um, but that that would be my recommendation with the the application and what we're looking for in terms of uh, potential applicants. Thank you so much. Uh, Trevor, we'll take a couple more questions. And so how do you make your how do you, how do the professor, how do the faculty, professors and advisors make themselves accessible to all of the students so they can accommodate their individual needs. Hmm. That's a great a great question. Let me think how to how to structure a response. You know what, maybe someplace we can start with Tiffany is, uh, you know, if Nicole were here, I'd ask her to just describe everything she's doing that's specific for providing support for transfer students. Um, could you speak on that? Sure, absolutely. So, um, so in terms of, uh, I'll, I'll do it this way. I'll do it uh, first in terms of uh, academic preparation. So one uh, option we have is the, um, the transfer uh, pre-engineering program that I mentioned, right? So that's a program where you can come on campus uh, even before classes start and you can uh, prepare for your uh, classes. We have a design project that you can work on and it's really an opportunity for you to build community and kind of get a sneak preview of what to, um, what to expect and you'll make 59 other friends, right? So that's that's one option. Second, there's the transfer link class where you can take a class. It's a semester long class where you can uh, work with other transfer students and learn about subdisciplines in your majors, professional development, and ways of building community. In addition, we also have uh, the transfer center, which also has transfer ambassadors. So transfer ambassadors are students that have already um, you know, transferred successfully and they've been here at least a year. And they are really uh, peer mentors, if you will. We also have a transfer mentoring program. So if you want to sign up for a mentor, every single uh, student that's a transfer student that wants to sign up for a mentor can sign up for a mentor. And um, with that, after you've, you know, kind of been a mentor or had a mentor, then you can be a mentor, right? You can be a transfer mentor. So those are just within the College of Engineering. I know that some departments uh, in particular also have initiatives. I know, for example, the Civil Engineering Department, they're actually uh, looking to boost more uh, programming for transfer students. And then, um, we have, you know, we have research. We have research specifically for uh, research funding, specifically for transfer students. So that's just some of the things that we have. When you think about it, we only have about 250 transfer students a year that come into the College of Engineering. So it's a pretty small uh, cohort, right? And so it's very um, easy to, to get to know everybody else who's in your major, especially if you're in one of the smaller engineering sciences majors, you'd have to try to not get to know other students in your major, um, which is a great thing because you can support each other, uh, you can you know be resourceful, network with them, right? I think that you know, when we think of schools and, and some of your you know community colleges might be smaller than, than others, but if you think about kind of how many students are coming in to your major as a transfer student, it's actually not that big. And so you'll have, you know, opportunities to connect with those people. And I would say connections, like in this journey of finding a transfer school, that's very, very important. So 
I would connect with each other. I would, you know, connect with us. I mean, even if it turns out that you don't come to Berkeley, I think there is value. We want you to, but I think there's value in connecting with folks. Yeah, that I, I want to just play off that and say, you know, look at these numbers on the those that registered and came in this fall. In basically, here's the point. The student to faculty ratio is, I think, the best in engineering science of any major. You have more access to faculty just by pure numbers. Um, you know, in energy engineering, there's four faculty. So that's, you know, four to one. Engineering math and stat, there's two faculty. So that's like six and a half to one. Engineering physics, there's two faculty. Environmental engineering science, there, there's two faculty. So you, you have disproportionately more access as an engineering science student, just from a pure numbers standpoint. And then the other thing I'll add specific to engineering science is for those who are interested in research and related to having more access to faculty, there tends to be more opportunities for research. And you know our faculty are not just teachers, they also run their research programs. And that's a really rich way to interact with them and their graduate students and their postdocs and their colleagues um, and is a key feature of engineering science. All right, uh, I think we have various other uh, commitments to get to, including myself, someone's waiting outside my door. Um, let me put my email in the chat. Feel free to reach out to me directly. And, you know, I know I'm going to see some of you in fall, um, hopefully all of you. Uh, so reach out if you have a question. And thanks for attending. Go Bears. Thank you.